it, it potentially could have been more. There was a fantastic chance or a good opportunity in the first half that Gabriel Jesus had, John. Um, and uh, it sort of he missed it. it. Was a it was a headed opportunity? I think if he'd got ahead on it, it probably would have gone in, or at least to say the xG for that individual chance probably would have been fairly high. He did get a touch on it, so it should, I think, be registered as an expected. Let me have a look. Well, a lovely small detail, but um, that sort of that kind of led the commentators at the time to talk about um, how Gabriel Jesus probably underperforms as a as a as a goal scorer, which I think is fair. Um, but it, I was struck during the game that I feel like that conversation, because it's the sort of it's the kind of one fact known about him, it's the one detraction because he's so good everywhere else, and in comparison to the rest of his ability on a pitch. Uh, it, 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 it does stand out as um, as the negative that people just kind of say it all the time, even in situations when it's not necessarily appropriate. Um, in terms of Gabriel Jesus's contribution to Arsenal uh, since he's joined the summer, it's like hard to argue anything other than very, very, very important. Um, but in terms of his goal scoring record specifically, he does underperform. Yeah, largely. I think there's been maybe one season in the last five where he's overperformed his expected goals. Um, the the what, do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, so, yeah, so ex in terms of explain expected goals. Yeah, uh, what do you mean by the fact that one in the last five seasons he's overperformed? Yeah, so obviously every time uh, a player takes a shot, then the stats nerds can generate a probability for that t shot to be scored. And that is simply based on a number of different variables. It depends on the model. Uh, but what they do is they take every, they take thousands and thousands of chances from historical data mm. they and they and they assess you know whether or not that goal was scored in that situation and what you what you're then trying to do is build a model which can look at a number of variables so the most important one is shot positioning right if you're in front of the goal you're more likely to score than if you're to the side of the goal or if you're close to the goal you're more likely to score than if it's a long way away mm. there are other variables that are taken into account so stats bomb i know they take like the ball height into account so if the ball's off the floor they'll measure how high it is um they'll they'll take into account things like defensive positioning, where the goalkeeper is positioned, etc. And the idea then is that you take all of these data points and you can be fairly confident that, you know, in general, that, that sh sh shot that you've taken would be taken, uh, would be scored in a certain percentage of time. But what you can do is you can then aggregate all of those chances that Gabriel Jesus had, add them all up and say, you know, the average player would score. We'd expect them to yeah, score Yeah, you'd more. expect them to score. So, for example, I think one season he, he scored 12 goals from about 14 expected goals. So right. you would say that the average player you would expect to get 14 goals with that with those sorts of sh chances. And is that, a big, um, is that a big difference? So, for example, we can see in the 2021 season, I think he underperformed quite heavily there. Yeah. I think um, about five goals is his worst. Five recently. goals is the worst. What would be considered a big difference? So, for example, if it is 14 goals or, or 12 goals, like are we... Is it a goal or two off, or is it? I mean, five sounds five is, big. In five that is scenario. big, yeah. but I, the thing is, because it's based on averages, um, you you will get. You know, that's like anyone who takes that shot. Mm. So that could potentially be a defender, or whatever. Like yeah. you, you would expect them to be worse at finishing. Now it's still so playing high level, so it is yeah, that yeah, level exactly. Well. So it's, but you'd expect still, a striker to overperform. You would expect a good a player who you consider to be a good finisher to overperform. Right. Now the thing that the, it's important to note is that. Actually, the biggest skill often for strikers is getting into the right place to generate good chances. Mm. So the fact that Gabriel Jesus is able to generate the amounts of expected goals that he gets is is a good sign. Mm. Um, the fact that he slightly underperforms historically just suggests he may be not quite so good as a, a good a finisher. But, uh, you know, someone like Messi will historically overperform his um, expected goals. We should probably look at the numbers for that yeah. so that we... So last season, he, he was underperforming. So people say he didn't play very well last season. He got six goals in the league. But his XG was about 11.3, I think. Mm. I'm, I think I'm, I'm right. I heard it in the video. So that's a massive underperformance from Messi, especially. Uh, obviously quite high numbers for the amount of games he played um, in the new club and all the circumstances that mm. Messi had. But he was hitting the post a lot or just missing shots. It just wasn't quite happening for him, which is why mm. he underperformed. Whereas players like... Harry Kane always score over their XG. Yeah. It's one of the big reasons that Spurs have done so well in recent seasons is that him and Son have overperformed yeah. their XG constantly. Mm. So Spurs have always been overperforming. When those players aren't totally on form, that's when they drop down to being below yeah, Champions yeah, League yeah. level. It's what they really had. Right. Liverpool, the season they won the league over their XG. Uh, Jesus, I mean, if you look at... It was pretty massive, wasn't it, that overperformance, the Liverpool Yeah, season, for, yeah. for goal scored, yeah, and especially towards the end of the season as well. Mm. Again, I covered that in a video on T4YRL if you want to have a look at um, mm. what's actually happened to Liverpool, it's called. 
Now, um, with Jesus, like, so the most goals he's ever scored in a season, in a league season, is 14 goals in 1920 for Man City. It's the most he's scored. And I think he played through the middle an awful lot that season. Mm-hmm. And for Man City, he's going to score loads. Raheem Sterling scores loads for Man City because he gets lots of chances in high value areas. Yeah. But apart from that, he's never really, like, he's generally played in the wide areas because he's better suited to being like, Guardiola's called him the best defensive presser. I can't remember what the exact phrase was, but best like pressing forward in the world mm-hmm. because he's able to attract players against Real Madrid in the Champions League once he played wide left it was also a wing back also a forward he does all the work you need of him and then can is very very clever in final third especially to rotate positions with players to drag people out of position and get himself into position and that's why his XG tends to be higher than lots of players who play wide because he does get in the right positions yeah but his finishing still would when he over underperforms it so often you think he just can't rely on him to score 25 goals a season, 20 goals a season. Sure. He'll get you at 14, like a really good inside forward, mm-hmm. which is probably what he is. But you want to play him through the middle because he can also lead that press and do certain things that other players can't. Mm. I mean, maybe the same as like Bobby Firmino, who can play through the middle as a, a central forward, but you don't think of him as a striker because he's not. He's better suited to be a bit deeper. And yeah. he sometimes goes into wide areas as well. Um, and Jesus is maybe similar. And I think uh, Arsenal going to the window... They said they'd like to be able to invest because they want to take advantage of this huge position they're in. And I think they look at someone who can do the defensive work, but also give them something in front of goal that can get them just the extra bit that they lack. Because Nketiah, I think, seems to lack that as well. The real clinical nature that you need to finish it. And you look at what... I mean, Liverpool identified a need to have a striker who scored goals. They got Nunez in. Mm. And City obviously got Holland, which is a different kind of style of player to what they've got. But it gives you They want themselves something. a Robin Van Persie. Yeah, well... I don't know, there's loads of players. I mean, the, the boy at Benfica we talked about earlier, Gonzalo Ramos, might be a half-decent effort. And then you've got sure. Benjamin Sesco, but he's going to sell Ed Leipzig, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's really already signed. Yeah. Okay. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.